हेलो माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू आईसीएस महेश पीयू कॉलेज धारवाड़ इन दिस सेशन वी आर लर्निंग वन मोर टॉपिक ऑफ इलेक्ट्रोकेमिस्ट्री बैटरीज इन दिस सेशन वी आर लर्निंग द टाइप्स ऑफ बैटरीज लाइक प्राइमरी सेल्स एंड सेकेंडरी सेल्स एंड सम एग्जांपल्स फॉर प्राइमरी सेल्स दैट इज ड्राई सेल एंड मर्क्यूरी सेल myself jayraj akde without any delay let us go for the concepts see let us look for how they are categorized the voltaic cells or galvanic cells are categorized into two types one is primary cell and the other one is secondary cell these are very important they usually ask it for two marks what is primary cell give an example or what is secondary cell give an example so let us go for it What is primary cell? Primary cells are those cells in which cell reactions cannot be reversed. Primary cells are those reactions in which the cell reactions are cannot be reversed. So that's why it cannot be reused. In simple words, primary cells are use and throw cells, which we cannot be recharged and reused. and what is secondary cell it is other than that these are the cells which have cell reactions which can be reversed and the cell can be recharged see both will occur with a spontaneous reaction but primary cells which we cannot reverse back the reaction by supplying higher potentials whereas the secondary cells it can be recharged by supplying the higher potential than the potential of the cell that's why we can use it as recharged and reused see let us have a shortcut we usually we confuse that we have a, we can have a shortcut primary stands for first primary stands for first that means one it can be used only once primary cells it can be usually used only once whereas secondary second stands for two so secondary cells which can be used more than two times two two times or more than two times that means it can be used again and again by recharging let us find the examples so for primary cells the example is dry cell where we use it for the dry cell which we usually use it for remote uh, remote controls and tape recorder etc and mercury cell which we usually use in watches and mic earphones etc the secondary cells the lead battery a huge lead battery of which we usually use as wet battery lead battery and the nickel cadmium cells which can be used again and again even we can have the mobile batteries like lithium ion lithium polymer batteries these are the secondary cells which can be usually used again and again by recharging let us discuss about dry cell this dry cell is also called leclanche cell because it was discovered or it was designed by george leclanche let us go for how it is exactly it's a primary cell and uh, which can be usually used only once we cannot recharge it again and again let us find what is the construction see if we can break a battery cell which we have you can see the same type of arrangement it contains a zinc sheet or the zinc plate outside the uh, outside the cell the entire cell sheet is covered with a zinc sheet that is what called zinc container and at the inside we have graphite rod this graphite rod acts as a cathode and the zinc container acts as anode here we have paste of mno2 and carbon a carbon black and mno2 it is made as slurry and which is present which is attached to the graphite rod and nh4cl and zncl2 moist paste of nh4cl and zncl2 which is directly in contact with the zinc container that's what the construction is let us find what is the reaction happens those reactions are quite complex but we can easily understand this here 
the zinc container acts as negative electrode which we call it as anode and the graphite rod acts as positive electrode we call it as a cathode we already know which one is anode and which one is cathode remember anode where the oxidation takes place that means this zinc plate here the oxidation has to take place and this graphite rod is cathode and near the cathode there should be reduction takes place so that's why it has positive charge and the anode has negative charge let us understand the cell reaction here as we already know anode is zinc plate here zinc is undergoing oxidation at anode oxidation has to take place zinc is undergoing oxidation to produce zn2 plus ion zinc will give zn2 plus plus two electrons here two electrons will be liberated during the reaction here the electrons are liberated at anode flows through a container at to at cathode what exactly happens at the cathode here let us try to understand the cathodic reaction it's quite complex here whatever the nh4 plus is present uh, in the moist paste that reacts with mno2 and forms MnOOH. Here it is quite important the manganese in plus 4 oxidation state it is converting into plus 3. Plus 4 to plus 3 means one electron reduction. So that's why one electron is consumed during the reaction and it produces ammonia. The reason which is important because here there is two electron will be liberated here only one electron is consumed so that's why this entire reaction is to be multiplied by two but these Leclanche cell can be can produce exactly 1.5 volt of electricity continuously that's due to the Zn2 plus formed will combine with ammonia to form tetramine zinc 2 complex as the product Zn2 plus is not available, there will not be any decrease in the electrode potential or the cell potential of the cell. The reaction is as follows Zn2 plus reacts with 4 ammonia to produce Zn NH3 4 times 2 plus. So that's why concentration of zinc is constant throughout. That is why the cis formation is irreversible whatever the complex is formed you cannot convert it back that is the reason this cell cannot be recharged and reused but we have a advantage over here because of this formation of complex it can produce constantly 1.5 volt of electricity dc electricity till it dies and we use this for transistors clock and the electronic instruments like remotes etc let's go for one more important cell called mercury cell usually use we we use this cell for a low potential required instruments like watches hearing aids earbuds etc there we use where very very low current is required here what happens we have zinc amalgam which is acting as an anode and here graphite and mercuric oxide which acts as cathode and the electrolyte which balances is saturated KOH and zinc oxide this is an elect this is an electrolyte which helps in conducting electricity here zinc amalgam anode and graphite uh, graphite mercuric oxide cathode this is what the construction is the entire cell is covered with steel outer loop here this acts as anode here it produces negative charge and from the bottom it is producing a positive charge where the graphite cathode is there let us try to look for its reactions here anodic anode is zinc amalgam electrode what is anodic reaction uh, the cathode is mercuric uh, oxide and carbon paste and the electrolyte is KOH and ZNO which we have already discussed 
let us go for anodic reaction at, at anode what happens zinc amalgam here zinc is amalgam is not reacting only zinc is undergoing oxidation at anode oxidation has takes place so zinc is undergoing oxidation to form zno hydrated zinc oxide with the liberation of two electrons what is the cathodic reaction here mercury has high tendency to undergo reduction that's why mercury uh, mercuric oxide uh, takes with takes these two electrons and reduced as mercury hgo plus 2 h2o plus 2 electron will form hg plus 2 oh minus here these two oh minus are consumed during the reaction here two oh minus are uh, come out as a product so that's why overall reaction is zinc plus hgo will gives zno plus hg it, it looks like a simple double decomposition reaction but the reaction is not that simple in the cell but yet it's a double decomposition reaction the overall reaction is double decomposition reaction it produces constantly it produces 1.35 voltage of electricity it is lesser than leclanche cell the cell potential of this is lesser than cell uh, leclanche cell so that's why we use it in uh, the instruments which uses very less power that's what like earphones ear hearing aids and watches etc thank you my dear friends thank you so much for your support please share like and subscribe thank you